Welcome to Zentangle Project Pack number 24. This is day six. My name is Rick. Hi, I'm Maria. And these are the materials we're going to use for this particular one. You'll see I've got that jelly roll in there. And just taking a moment to really appreciate this book, this, this material, the textures, and the opportunity to sit together and appreciate, create, and see what comes out of our pens. I'm going to start with the O1 black, and we're going to be doing Molygon. And Molygon starts out with, surprise, surprise, a crescent moon shape of sorts. Which was supplied to us on this page. Right, which, which we're working with on this spread. And I'm going to sort of duplicate that shape by partially auraing the outer part. See, I'm starting part way over. I mean, I guess you could do the whole thing, but I just start part way over. But what, what happens is you, you figure out that it's like driving a car and turning the wheel, and it gets you going in another direction. Yes. By the way you aura it, it heads you in a direction. And, and if you just practice that, mm -hmm. it's like it, it really works. You, you, you can go circles around and back and really cool. So you can make these pretty much any size you want. But if you go all the way around, then it just becomes really big really yes, quickly. Right. And this is a really cool tangle because most of the tangles that we do either just you know, a lot of them, we see something in nature or something in architecture or paintings or fabric, and well, how could we make a tangle out of that? And this one, Maria came up with just randomly, and then we found a uh, walking on the beach that there are these little boat shells that that land on each other or stick to each other, and they really look just like this. Yeah. So even though I, I thought I had uh, sort of discovered something, um, I didn't. <laughs> well, or, you know, it, 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 it was there all that, along. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like the design that inspired you inspired that, and it's, it was perhaps tapping into the same source. Now, you'll see I took a, a much smaller one off of that, and you you can see how you can, like Maria said, sort of steer these in different directions. So I'm going off on this direction. Turning your tile as whatever is comfortable. And I'm sort of rounding those edges. Well, since I had room, I'm going to go off in two directions. A little fork in the mollygon here. Taking the road less traveled. <laughs> Taking the mollygon less, right? <laughs> Anyways, you, you, some of you have heard this story, but it's, it's a great story of the, how we got the name. Maria had come up with this tangle and was like doing it at the kitchen table, and we were telling Molly and Martha about it, and uh, we, were tr we were trying to figure out a name. And uh, isn't that cool? Mm. And? And so we're going to, I'll, I'll complete the story later. I just wanted to explain what we're doing next here. So I'm going to restate that pre-printed line. And now, very much like what Maria did in her um, spread with well mm -hmm. and filling the space with something with a different well each time, I'm going to fill each one of these mollygon uh, reticula with a fragment of crescent moon. And my effort is going to be to do it a little bit different each time, but using the same principle, the same aura resonance throughout. So back to the story of the name. Molly and Martha and Maria were downstairs talking and then I was in my office upstairs 
And I came running down because I had a question for Molly, but she had just left. And I came down, looked in the kitchen, and I said to Maria and Martha, Molly gone? And they looked at each other, and it was like, that's, that's the name of the tangle. That's the name of the tangle. It's not a polygon. It's not it's a this. A, it's a molygon. It's a molygon. So here you see I did the second one, a little off-center. The third one I'm going to do with two crescent moons. It's sort of like the one. It, very, oh, yeah. very similar. We must have been dreaming together. Yeah, I can't believe how similar the approach was. So again, just auraing a slightly different way, keeping the resonance the same. Or you can change the resonance as well. It's, it's not uh, mandatory. And just, oh, there's one right in the middle. Don't usually see that, that full moon. And you can aura in different ways. And we could have gone back and forth with the 05 to fill in, but I really like the not switching pens if the I don't have to. Yeah. yeah. And it gives a, its own texture as well. And here you see I'm starting to play with, oh, maybe I'm going to do my one crescent moon right opposite the one from the other. And here I'm playing with the width of the resonance, resonances of the auras. So there's almost a little continuity from one molygon shape to another. So I just had an idea. I'm, you'll see I'm skipping that one because where they split, I've got an idea. And here you can see they're sharing spaces. And this is another way to do auras where they come together. You can interweave them. Like between. Like between. Yep. So a lot of resonances and similarities. and It's funny, you know, the, the similarities to music. And when you're learning music at the mm. beginning and everything is... Uh, a, a C chord and a G chord and, you know, uh, whatever. And and then all of a sudden you you discover B flat. Oh, my God. Let's Diminished do, fifths. Yeah, let's whatever, add yeah. those in and augmented seventh. Right. <laughs> so from my, what was it, day three, I had this shape that I had put in to the between, and I'm thinking, oh, just for symmetry I'm going to, have that shape appear on this page too. And that one is doing with my O1 a uh, series of my flux. And even with the O1, even though it's a more delicate tip, you can still uh, have a thinner and thicker line. So he's adding those beautiful red berries again, which just you know, stand out so so beautifully, but but just by putting a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes that that's the key. With a little bit of a little bit of a highlight there, so then now we have all of our ink down. I'm going to go in and start adding some graphite on the perimeter of these uh, polygon shapes. You know, turning your tile whichever way is comfortable for you. And just do this to show how it, look at the difference that the tortillon makes, right? Mm. I actually sometimes like to um, use the tortillon before I've put all my graphite down so mm. that I don't have to put my hand over raw mm -hmm. graphite, you know. Well, and that's what um, I ended up doing was working from the left to the right because I realized, oh, I'm going to have to put my hand on that 
so um, I just turned it around. But there we go with all of the shading and the tortillon. So now like in day three, I'm coming, I think it was three, coming back in and filling those interstices with some uh, of that, I think we have the indigo pencil. Right. We had different blues and different people got different, uh, different blues. So looking forward to seeing what everybody else does with their blue. Shading the bottom of the, or adding well, graphite to the bottom of the leaf. Yeah. And then with the tortillon, not only drawing the graphite out on the leaf, but also adding it just to give a little dimensionality to those berries or those orbs, whatever they are, those shapes. Nice. Not bad. It's almost like a, a brooch, mm. you know, like uh, on a patterned dress, you know. Right. Now with this uh, interesting um, jelly roll pen that, that it looks like gray when you put it down, but then it turns into something else as it dries. It's really kind of magical. So there's little metal flakes in it that float to the surface as it dries. Yeah, and you don't want to uh, tortillon or rub over that particular pen stroke because the the uh, yeah, the you you lose the effect yeah, of that yeah. yeah so this this should be the last stroke right. you put in I mean you can but you you lose that cool effect right so originally I had a plan that I was going to you know put a whole bunch of auras around the entire piece, you know, top, bottom, all ends and everything. And then I was going to put a little checkerboard band in there or orbs. But as I was doing it and as I was seeing how this line from this pen was thicker than I anticipated, I thought, okay, I'm going to just change my approach and just do a few sort of supporting it a little bit and holding it together. And you can also see, already see the difference of the uh, color of the line I'm doing to the one next to it. Yeah, it sort of separates and, and uh, outlines the line. Mm -hmm. right? And now I'm adding like bits of aura, not mechanically the whole way, but just sort of filling in almost like using aura as um, uh, rounding. Right? Just, just a little bit. Or almost aura as shading even, perhaps. There we go. It almost uh, suggests movement. Yeah. You know. And again, just taking time to look at it, hear what it has to say, and then, oh, it needed something there. Let's just put something there. So it's almost like a, a little mini aura that's resonating into these mollygons. So then I really thought I was done. And I'm saying, yeah, here it is. Appreciate that. It's beautiful. Well, I realized I never t added the white charcoal. Mm -hmm. So I started up the camera again and went on this and just went over the center part with the white charcoal. And, and it suggests that sparkle in the middle, right? Right. And just sort of... Yeah, and then I realized, okay, let me do it from the other side so I'm not putting my hand all over the white charcoal. And doing it fairly heavy, and I'm using the, the charcoal almost as its own tortillon. Moving around the, the charcoal. Yeah. So there we go. 
but wait. <laughs> now, you didn't have this in your kit, and so I'm, I really apologize, but, um, you know, I went into the cabinet behind Molly's desk and grabbed a, a thing of Mod Podge and uh, got a brush from Maria that she didn't mind getting Mod Podge on and figured, let me just shine up that that mooka with, with the colored flux in there. And so I kept, I kept finishing this. This is my third finish on this. I just got it all covered. And I waited a little bit. And I decided, yeah, cap it so it doesn't come off. And then I came back and I did another coat. So this is exciting. It's like a video watching Mod Podge dry. <laughs> but there's the result. And you can see the glittering of the, of the Jelly Roll and the Mod Podge. And if you don't have, gel, if you don't have Mod Podge, I always grab my uh, clear nail polish. And it, it does the same great, thing, yeah. but it has a little bit of a smell to it. And uh, if you can deal with that, it's, it happens to be handy in your, in your cupboard. So once again, thank you all for playing with us, tangling with us, creating with us, and we look forward to seeing you on the next day. Bye now. See you later.